In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the current conditions as always, also talking about that tropical cyclone that we need to talk about and some more severe weather. Let's get straight into this video though, and first things first, we're taking a look at our current radar imagery, and as you can see, there's quite a bit going on here in the northwest and also in the eastern United States where we actually have some severe storms across the region. Let's just quickly move up into the northwestern corner of the nation, and we can see that there is quite a bit of showery activity heading just like this. Um, across the region. There's also some heavier showers around this region, which is probably quite interesting, possibly causing some flooding in here. Uh, definitely when you see those yellows and oranges in a very large rainy region, it does lead towards potential flooding taking place, so that is worth mentioning. Now, as we move towards the eastern United States on the southern end, we can see that there is some thunderstorm activity moving across just like this across the southeast, but really the main line that we're concerned about is this region here that's developing. So we're going to see this area push eastward to where it's eventually impacting all of these areas to the east of it. And this is really where we're watching for potential tornadoes, damaging wind, hail. But we'll take a look at the Storm Prediction Center in a little while. Uh, these storms do look quite potent, though. And we do see a lot of this showery and potentially thunderstorm activity going on up here. Um, that this is potentially causing, again, some flooding in this region as we're seeing those pretty persistent yellows and oranges. And then we just have some lighter showers across this region up here, kind of in the north uh, eastern United States interior and northeastern United States. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at some modeled guidance and really just break that down and then eventually the severe weather as well. And as we take a look here at the upcoming storminess, we can see that for later today, this afternoon, we do see that that storminess moves into the eastern United States. Just like that, we do have this storm really developing out in the northwest as well. Uh, and as we move on towards about Saturday, tomorrow, for the time I'm making this video, May 28th, we do see some of this storminess up here in the northwest again, including some snowfall there for Oregon, Idaho, and Wyoming, pretty much exclusive for the highest elevations uh, of these regions. Now, we also see that as we continue on, uh, things kind of dry up for the eastern United States as a whole. But for the northwest corner here of the nation, we do see a ton of precipitation. Things are actually going to be really sunny here for a while, starting Sunday uh, in the eastern United States, even towards Monday, Memorial Day. Things are going to be really nice, okay? Things are going to be really, really nice, actually, in the eastern United States. We do have a strong low-pressure system here, 989 millibar low-pressure center bringing some storminess here to these surrounding regions. Also some snowfall going on here for these states. Let's keep going with this towards Tuesday, May 31st. We can see that this 989 millibar low pressure center moves up just like that. Potentially a cold front developing down there with a warm front up here. So expect very warm conditions pushing all the way up into Canada and through the Great Lakes uh, with pretty potent storms developing in behind this. This is our upcoming severe weather event that we're watching for. Uh, and as we approach towards Wednesday, we can see that this stretches all the way towards these areas here. Potential for severe weather still by this point with colder air behind it, by the way. So we're seeing cold air really force its way in behind this. Warm air still surging out ahead of it. And that difference in direction, whenever you see warm air heading like this and cold air hitting it from the side, that is when we're watching for potential tornadoes. Now, as we continue on towards Thursday, June 2nd, we can see that some of that storm is actually spreads further eastward here. As we can see from Texas all the way up through the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, uh, as well as the northeast, we're seeing a lot of this activity spread into these areas. Uh, Friday, uh, June 3rd here, we can see that there is going to be some thunderstorm activity in some parts of the nation here, potentially. Very, very scattered and isolated, but really nothing major going on by this point. We do see that there is that tropical cyclone trying to develop there. And as I continue this on, you can watch that as it moves over the Yucatan Peninsula towards Sunday, June 5th. Also, by this point, we're seeing some storminess up there in the upper Midwest there, as well as the southeast and also for the northwest. So we're seeing a couple areas of some minor storminess, but nothing too major at this point. So we see our tropical disturbance move like this, and then it gets to this point. Um, so... We're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. Here's the upcoming precipitation over the next 10 days. Uh, so we're, we're looking at about nothing in the white areas. We're looking at a gray, in the grays, we're looking at about a tenth of an inch or less of rainfall. Greens are going to be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Blues will be half an inch to an inch. Yells will be an inch to two inches. Reds will be two to five inches. And then your browns will be five to ten inches. 
of precipitation. And then these blues down here for Mexico and even into the Gulf of Mexico, even touching Cuba potentially. That's where we're at 10 inches plus over the next 10 days, meaning your average uh, precipitation per day over the next 10 days is going to be about an inch per day, which is absolutely insane. And that is associated with that tropical cyclone, meaning that this thing is going to have a lot of precipitation with it already. This model thinks this is going to be a pretty intense tropical disturbance. For the snowfall over the next 10 days, we can see that if you're in the grays, you're expecting a dusting, if anything. Blues will be 2 to 6 inches of snowfall, purples will be 6 to 10, pinks will be 10 to 20, and your pastels will be 20 inches plus. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at that upcoming temperature pattern. All right, now here we are taking a look at that upcoming temperature pattern. Let's just move towards this afternoon. Things will be a little bit chillier here in the eastern United States as that minor cold front moves through. The storms won't be minor, but the differences it's going to be make in the upcoming pattern is going to be quite minor. We're going to be looking at maybe a day of cold here, um, and it's already warming up by the time we're reaching Saturday for the coast. And, and really, these areas are hardly below normal, maybe about 1 to 5 degrees below normal. So it's going to be very typical weather, I would say. These areas are far above normal temperatures here for the plains, and then we see far below normal temperatures here for the northwest. Keep all of this in mind. Sunday. Now, by Sunday, May 29th, we see that everywhere is warming up. Central, eastern United States, uh, everything is really heading in a warmer direction. But for the west, we see cooling down. We see precipitation. This is good for all the droughts. Uh, this is really the weather you want to see out west, really. Um, this is ideal uh, for all the issues we're seeing, basically. Monday, May 30th, is going to be Memorial Day. We see that for the plains in the eastern United States, this is going to be hot, hot weather, great for swimming. Uh, great for being outside unless it's too hot too hot for you, but I mean, it's going to be nice. It's not going to be too stormy. It's not going to be too bad. Tuesday, uh, we see that this is going to be May 31st. It's going to be also very warm in the eastern United States as we kind of get into a heat wave potentially for some spots. Wednesday, June 1st, we see very hot temperatures still lingering for this region here. Uh, so for these areas, we see that there is things warming up here in the western seaboard because of positive PNA. This is going to force this cold air to eventually head into the eastern United States. So we see the jet stream by this point is like this and then like this. So we see that there is a trough really moving down like this, but primarily it's actually moving eastward here. So we're seeing a lot of eastward movement with this. By June 2nd, we can tell that it is moving eastward. We still have warmer temperatures holding on to the southeast though. For Friday, June 3rd, we can see that it really just becomes more minor by the time it's heading eastward. Uh, it really dissipates, and we're already seeing colder temperatures trying to trickle their way into the northwest, which probably means that the, the cooldown in the east isn't going to last too long. It's by Saturday, June 4th. Sunday, June 5th, we see that warm air starts to really make its way back into the east. We see a lot of cold making its way back into the west, which, again, is kind of ideal. Uh, and this is kind of what we're left with. It's a pretty messy pattern here at the end of the model run here on June 5th, heading into June 6th. It's hard to really tell what's going on here, what's going to be next, and I love that, the anticipation. So over the next few days, we will get a better idea of what's going to happen between June 5th and June 10th, but for now, it is a big old question mark. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tropics, shall we? Here's our cyclonic vorticity. I've been showing this every single day. This shows large-scale rotation in the atmosphere, so things like tropical cyclones like that that spin, we will be able to see on this. They'll show up as you know, your yellows, reds, and even purples in some more major cases. Uh, and we do see that some of this happens regularly, but you will be able to tell when it's a tropical cyclone. Just watch this area right there. It's going to move up just like this. So we'll see it move in. So that is a tropical cyclone right there. Um, this right here. So it's easy to tell the difference there, I think, versus something else. This is by June 1st, actually. And what I've noticed is that it likes to hang out in here for about a day, but what it does is it really heads over this Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, it's trending more and more towards really being directly over this land area, very mountainous land area. And what happens with this is this is going to hold back development. So this is good news. Um, this storm does not get very intense in this area. It's not able to develop. It gets over the Yucatan Peninsula, which is going to hold back some development. It's mostly once it breaks free of this area that I'm watching for. So we'll watch that this happens. You see it, it's almost over water now. This is by Sunday, June 5th. Uh, and by the time we're reaching Sunday, Monday time frame, that's June 5th through June 6th, we see that this area here really starts to develop. Where it will head after this point is 
uh, question mark, but it will have an easier time developing after this point. Um, it could really turn around. It could do pretty much anything. I've been talking about this for days. It can head in any direction. And this is the end of the model run, so this is all we know. Now, something even more interesting, I think, happens here on the GFS model. <clears throat> Let's watch this play out. So I have a different view here, obviously. We see that it actually heads in like this, and we're going to see it kind of do this. So be watching that area. This is by June 3rd. So you see that energy really just shove its way up past Cuba and past the Bahamas really quickly. So by June 4th here, this is going to be the morning of June 4th, nothing is really developed. It really doesn't start to develop until Sunday, June 5th, which is almost identical to what we saw on the European model, except just a very, very different region. And it really develops offshore of North Carolina there on Sunday, June 5th. And then it almost wants to hit like North Carolina and Virginia, but what ends up happening is we see it just turns like this uh, on a dime and then it heads out to sea. Um, that's a little bit bullish. I think that's a little bit of a stronger storm than what we're anticipating here, obviously. Um, and we will take all the options here from the models and consider them, obviously. But uh, for now, we're going to take this with a grain of salt and just consider the possibility that this could really go anywhere. And it could, it really intensify to whatever storm, uh, you know, it, it could be anything. So it's pretty far out at this point. We're going to continue to track it daily. So tune in with us daily as we're just going to be tracking this storm every single day. Uh, and just getting you guys the latest information on this and the updates. So far, the European model has been sticking to its guns, which is a good sign that a model might be onto something. The GFS model has been changing its mind left and right and showing completely different things day to day, which is usually a sign that a model does not have a good handle on what's going to happen. But that's not to say that the European model will be right and the GFS model will be wrong. Really, anything can be right and anything can be wrong. It's really confusing, I know. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to briefly talk about that upcoming severe weather. Now here's the day one categorical outlook and as you can see we have four general thunderstorm risks, two there for Texas, uh, actually three there for Texas, three are touching Texas at this point. Um, as you can see, one up there for the northwest, two that are very far south there in Texas and Texas and Louisiana, and then one there for the eastern United States. All these light green areas are where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible is so heat every watch warning and advisory. We have two darker green regions going on, and that's our marginal risk areas where we expect isolated severe weather to take place. And then we have two yellow areas where we expect scattered severe weather to take place. That's called our slight risk region. For the individual outlooks for this date, we have first off our damaging wind outlook. This is all based on 25 miles of a given location, by the way. So we have two green areas indicating 5% chance of damaging wind taking place. And then two yellow areas indicating 15% chance of damaging wind taking place. And you'll notice that one up there for North and South Dakota, as well as Wyoming and Montana, that one has that hatched area in there. That means that especially damaging wind can take place in there. The ingredients are there for very, very damaging wind. So we're going to be watching for even what is beyond considered severe as far as wind. Um, so pretty strong winds are expected up there. For hail, we expect a 5% chance in the two green areas. Really not a huge hail day, it doesn't appear. For tornadoes, we have an area of 2% chance of tornadoes there for the eastern seaboard from South Carolina all the way up through into New Jersey and New York. And then we have a 5% chance area of tornadoes all the way there from North Carolina through Virginia into Maryland and D.C. as well as the Delmarva up into Pennsylvania and New Jersey. For day two here, we have four, actually five general thunderstorm risks on this date. All the lighter green areas are our general thunderstorm risk. Again, anything is possible, so heat, heat every watch, warning, and advisory. We have three marginal risk areas in the darker greens, indicating that isolated severe weather is expected. Uh, and then we also have our yellow area there for Nebraska and South Dakota, where we have a slight risk of severe weather, which, which is where we expect scattered severe weather to take place. For day three here, however, we have two general thunderstorm risks, again, where general thunderstorms are expected. We have a marginal risk there in the darker green where isolated severe weather is expected. The yellow area is our, or our slight risk area where scattered severe weather is expected. And then we even have an orange area there for Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota, and Minnesota, where we expect widespread severe weather to start taking place. So that's for Sunday, May 29th. Keep that in mind that this is looking quite elevated. We expect pretty bad severe weather on this day. So really, really pay attention here on Sunday, May 29th. 
for day four, the extended range, we expect a lot of the same from Sunday, except just a little bit of some different regions here. Uh, we have a 15% chance of severe weather there within the yellow for Monday, May 30th. Um, that's going to translate to a slight risk there in that yellow area. So once that's day three, we will see this turn into a slight risk most likely in the yellow. And then that orange area is a 30% chance of severe weather, and that we should see that translate to an enhanced risk, at least, of severe weather there for uh, Monday, May 30th. Anyway, we had so much to talk about, guys, but for today's confidence tab, until they get a handle on this tropical cyclone, we're remaining at a four out of six. Um, I'm really waiting for anything that makes me feel confident uh, in, in what's going to happen with that. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lerla LePan, Mandy Birchville, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cunha, Alyssa Catbite, Charles Tennant, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Van, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.